Hello everyone, and welcome back to Baseballogy, where we look at the current Hall of Famers and discuss their worthiness for induction. As always, I don't advocate for anyone's removal from the Hall of Fame, but I do like talking about these players and where they historically rank. Today's video is the 18th player we've looked at so far, and will be the first player that wasn't voted in by the Veterans Committee. No, instead today's player was actually voted in by the writers, and is another in a long line of defensively minded players that made the Hall of Fame without producing a lot of offensive value. Today we look at Rapid Moranville. Moranville suited up for several teams from 1912 to 1935, but mostly played for the Boston Braves. And at shortstop, there weren't many better in the field. Moranville was worth over 270 defensive runs, a total that was good for second all-time at the position to another shortstop whom we'll be covering soon. He collected over 5,000 putouts at the position, along with over 1,100 double plays, both of which were records when he retired. He also finished second in assists with over 7,300 of them. Rabbit was a very entertaining player in the field, much like Ozzie Smith would be decades later. Moranville would camp under pop-ups and feign interest in the ball until it settled nicely into his glove, calmly situated at his waist. He was an immensely entertaining figure that endeared himself to both fans and writers. This helped Moranville make the Hall of Fame in 1954 on his 14th ballot. Before I get into the batting numbers, I just want to remind you of something. Remember the years he played in? Flash them up there. 1912 to 1935. Think about how much baseball changed during that time span offensively. The game very quickly became a high offensive game, meaning the hustling no-hit shortstop wasn't nearly as valuable. You know Moranville will have a poor offensive profile for the Hall of Fame. But apparently, my lot in life is to just keep on trucking with these players, so here I go. In nearly a quarter of a century in the big leagues, Moranville hit 258, 318, 340, which was a robust 83 WRC+. In over 2,600 games, Moranville collected 2,605 hits, including 380 doubles, 177 triples, and only 28 home runs. In fact, Moranville had almost as many seasons hitting at least one home run as he did not hitting a home run at all. I suppose that's an impressive feat, but it underlines how poor of a choice he was for the Hall of Fame. Moranville could steal a few bases in his career, with nearly 300 of them, but that total was good for only 88th all-time when he retired. Even his hit total, which was decent, ranked only 23rd when he retired, and the only ones above him with more plate appearances were Hannes Wagner, who had 810 more hits, Cap Anson, who had 813 more hits, Tris Speaker, who had over 900 more hits, and of course Ty Cobb, who had over 1,500 more hits. All of this is to just point out that whatever offensive accomplishments that Moranville had were more due to his career length than due to his actual hitting abilities. As a side note, to those 10 writers that voted for Jamie Moyer last year, and the ones who are salivating over the thought of voting for a guy like Bartolo Colon when he will get on the ballot at some point, the same reasoning applies here. Don't. Do it. Please. I beg you. Anyway, Moranville was a defensive marvel at shortstop, but like we've covered before, there needs to be some offensive value added. Be it Aparicio and his steals, Ozzy and his hits, there needs to be something extra in addition to the glove that makes a player a strong candidate for Cooperstown. And Moranville just doesn't have that. He had three seasons in his career where he was above league average offensively, with a high of 133 in 1918. Unfortunately, after those three seasons, he only got as high as the 90s three more times in his career, as the offensive swell of Babe Ruth and the rest of the world began to overtake the game. Moranville was a good player, he just couldn't compete offensively in a new version of the game. However, Moranville is another baseball lifer, much like Ray Shawk and Frank Chance. After his playing career wrapped up, Moranville will go on to be a youth baseball teacher, most notably in New York City, and help thousands of children learn the game. One of his students was future Hall of Famer Whitey Ford, and Ford credited a lot of his early career success to Moranville's teaching. For all of Moranville's contributions defensively and after his playing career, I think Moranville's life is worthy of induction. Just not solely as a player, because we don't want to go down the road where the hustling small shortstop gets a place in Cooperstown, because then this guy gets inducted and nobody wants to see that. Thanks for checking out today's episode on Rabbit Moranville. If you liked what you heard, please click the like and subscribe buttons to get updates on tomorrow's video. Feel free to leave a comment on Moranville's induction as well, and let me know if there's anything I missed. You can also try to guess who the next video will be about. Here's your hint. This player from the early years was known as the Orator. That's it for this time, and I'll see you next time.